Okay, so in this problem we're looking at equilibrium. So forces and torques in equilibrium. So we're asked to design a decorative mobile shown in the figure and the strings and the rods, we're treating them as having neg negligible weight and the rods are gonna hang horizontally. So what we wanna do is draw a free body diagram for each of the rod and then find the weights of the balls labeled A, B and C in the diagram and find the tensions in the strings S1, S2 and S3. And lastly, the question asks us, what can we say about the horizontal location of the mobile center of gravity? So at first glance, this problem looks very complicated. That structure in the figure looks very complicated. But as you know, with all complex problems, the best course of action is to try and split them into simpler problems. And we can do that fairly in a straight, fairly straightforward manner with this problem by looking at each rod individually. So the keys to this are that we know that the rods are in equilibrium because nothing is moving. So nothing's rotating, nothing is moving. Therefore, for each rod, the conditions for equilibrium are met. And the two conditions for equilibrium is that the sum of the torques on the object is zero. So there's no net torque and the sum of the forces in the object are zero. So there's no net force either. So in this case, all of the force is in the y direction. So we don't need to, to satisfy the condition for equilibrium in the x and y direction. We're only looking at the y direction. So let's minimize this and look at our free body diagram. So in order to save a little bit of time, I drew these before we started. Now, unfortunately, the my lines aren't exactly straight as it's not that easy to draw a straight line on a slippery screen, but hopefully you get the idea anyway. So we've got our three rods, the bottom, the middle, and the top. So if we look at the bottom rod in our figure here, we see that weight A is eight centimeters to the right of the hanging point where we've called it S3. And on the left of S3, we've got at a distance of four centimeters, a weight of six newtons. So we've represented that on our diagram here. We've got our six Newton weight, uh, four centimeters from the center, and we've got weight A hanging uh, eight centimeters from the center. So the free body diagram then is gonna be the, the two weights hanging downwards, so six Newtons and WA hanging downwards, and they're gonna be balanced by S3 pointing upwards. So that's gonna form the basis of our conditions for equilibrium for the, for the bottom rod in terms of the, the forces in the Y direction. Similarly then for the middle. So the middle rod is on the right hand side, it's pulled down by uh, S3, which is at a distance of five centimeters. And on the left hand side, it's pulled down by WB, which is at a distance of three centimeters. And the whole thing is then supported by string S2, which provides the upward force or the tension to keep the, again, to keep this part of the, the mobile, this rod in uh, equilibrium when it comes to forces. Lastly, then we've got the top rod and it's hanging by string S1, which is again gonna provide our tension. And in terms of what's pulling downwards on it, we've got weight S2 at a distance two centimeters to the left. And then we've got uh, six centimeters to the right, we've got WC or weight C. So there's our, they are our three free body diagrams. Now all we have to do is look at each one individually and figure out what those weights are and what those tensions are gonna be. Okay, so first things first then, let's write down the conditions for equilibrium for all three rods. So what we're gonna find is that sigma F in the Y direction equals zero. So the sum of the forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. And we'll take uh, Y as positive in this direction. So this is gonna be the plus Y direction. Secondly then, sigma tau is gonna be equal to zero. So the sum of the torques on each rod is gonna be equal to zero. So none of the rods are displaying rotational motion. Therefore, the, the torque on each one is zero. So the sum of the torques on it are gonna be equal to zero about around the point of suspension. So the point of suspension is here, here, and here in each case. So what does that mean then for the, and let's start at the bottom. So if, if you think through this problem, or if you approach it in a, in a couple of different ways, what you'll find is that the only way to solve it is to, to, to work from the bottom up. That way you only have one unknown each time and that allows you to work that way. Okay, so for the lower rod then, let's work on the lower rod first. So we'll write this down just to remind ourselves that this is the one we're talking about. And again, the sum of the torques is gonna to be equal to zero and the sum of the forces in the Y direction is gonna be equal to zero. So first of all, we've got the sum of the torques 
is equal to zero. So the torques, if we do the torque equation, we've got four um, centimeters. We've got six newtons at four centimeters. So let's do the right hand. So whoops. Let's do the right hand side of this equation first. We've got six newtons at four centimeters on the right hand side. And that is going to be equal to the torque from the right hand side, which is WA times eight centimeters on the right hand side. So we can then solve fairly simply for WA there. And that tells us that WA is equal to three newtons. So simple enough, just solve, set up the torque equation for the, 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 the clockwise and counterclockwise, if you want, or left and right, depending on how you want to view it. And we solve for WA and that gives us uh, three newtons. So now we figured out WA, as I said, three newtons. So now the sum of the torque, or sorry, the sum of the forces in the, whoops, in the Y direction is also going to be equal to zero. So how, how do we use that information? Well, we know that, you know, if we go back to our diagram here, in the upwards direction, we've got S3. So S3 is going to be pulling upwards and that's going to be equal to six newtons pulling downwards on the left-hand side plus three newtons pulling down on the right-hand side. And that's going to give us a total of nine newtons for S3. So that's a fairly uh, simple solution there for S3. So that's the lower rod solve now. We know what WA is. We know it's nine newtons. And we know what the tension in the string S3 is. Uh, and that's also going to be equal to nine newtons. So just to keep, keep things a little bit clear, we'll move on to the middle rod and we'll put that in blue. And we'll underline it again. So we know what WA is. We know what the, the tension in string S3 is. So we could add that in here. So if we go back to the original diagram here, what you'll see is that string S3 uh, pulling downwards or you know providing the tension for the bottom rod is also pulling downwards on s2 so that nine newtons now is is transferred if you like to the next part of the problem which is the the, the weight pulling down on the right hand side of s2 so uh middle one is here okay so let's set things up then for the middle rod so for the middle rod again we look at the torque first sigma tau equals zero so for the middle rod, that's going to tell us that WB, so there's the unknown here is on the left hand side of this rod. And that's going to tell us, why does this keep happening? Oops. We've got WB, and this is our torque equation, times how far out is WB? It's at a distance of three centimeters. Times three centimeters is equal to, in the, count, in the clockwise direction then, we've got S3 times five centimeters. Now S3 we've worked out at nine newtons. And the distance out is five centimeters. So again, it's a fairly straightforward, whoops, we're done there. A fairly straightforward calculation for WB then. And when we do it, we get, what do we get? We get 15 newtons for WB. So 15 newtons for WB, which is, as I've said already, this weight on the left hand side pulling down. So now, what, how does that tell us the tension? in the string S2. And again, we're working our way through the problem. We're working up through the rods, bottom to middle to top. So we know that we've got the 15 newtons of WB pulling down. So sigma Fy is equal to zero. So what that tells us is that string S2, the tension in string S2 is gonna be equal to WB, which is 15 newtons, plus whatever the weight on the other side was. And the weight on the other side was S3. So if we go and figure out S3 from the earlier part of the problem, we got that at nine newtons, nine newtons. So that gives us a total of 24 newtons. So the tension now in string S2 is 24 newtons. Confused yet? Hope not. So lots of numbers here, but they all, whoops, I'm just sort of filling them in so we know where to, to find what. So they all, you know, have a, a fairly well-defined origin. Hopefully I'm not doing anything too crazy and leaving you wondering where I'm getting certain numbers. Okay, so lastly now, let's look at the case for the top rod. We'll put this in red. So the top rod, and we'll go back and have a look at the diagram just to refresh our memory. So the top rod, it's got a string we're calling S1, providing the tension, pulling upwards, and it's got 
S2 on one side, so the, the tension from string S2 on one side pulling downwards, and what we're calling WC or weight C on the right hand side uh, pulling downwards, and we know the distance both of those are away from the center. So we know those distances, and that allows us to set up our torque equation straight away. So sigma tau equals zero because we've got no rotation. So on the left hand side, we've got S2 times two centimeters. So S2 times two centimeters on the left hand side, whoop, two centimeters is equal to, and on the right hand side, we've got six centimeters times WC. But actually let's go back and start here again. We know what S2 is, so I'm gonna write it in at the start here. So we've got S2, we solved for the, in the previous problem is 24 Newtons. So this is gonna be, our equation now is gonna be 24 Newtons times our two centimeters. And that's gonna be equal to WC times six centimeters. So that's WC times uh, six centimeters. So again, we just, the only unknown here is WC and that's gonna allow us to solve for it. And that tells us WC is eight Newtons, lovely. So we've solved for WC is eight Newtons now. So now we know the two downward forces. We, so we know again, the sigma Fy is equal to zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. So S1 now is gonna be equal to the two weights that are pulling down here. So the two weights pulling down are S2 and WC. S2 we've already solved for, it's 24 Newtons. WC we've solved for, it's eight Newtons. So 24 Newtons plus eight Newtons equals 32 Newtons. So now all of a sudden we have all the information we, we need. We've solved for WA, we've solved for WB, and we've solved for WC. And in doing so, we figured out the tension in the three strings that are holding the mobile together. The only part we haven't done yet is part C asks us where does the center of gravity lie? So let's just look at the, 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 equa or the question once more. So it says, what can you say about the horizontal location of the mobile center of gravity? Well, the center of gravity has to lie along a line here. So uh, it's, I can't actually draw in this picture. It has to, to lie along a line through S1, a vertical line through S1. Otherwise there would be some torque and the whole mobile would start to swing in one direction or the other. So because the net torque of the whole system is zero, that means that the center of gravity has to lie along a line that passes through the point S1, a vertical line. So that's basically how we solve that one. Break the question up into parts, solve it piece by piece, plug the information that you've just solved for into the next part, and eventually, you know, there's, there's no tricks to it really, it's just following the problem through from start to finish.